Hi, I'm John Drennan. Hi, I'm Marlena Drennan. Uh, we've been married for almost 13 years. It'll be 13 years in September. Uh, we have five children. We're a blended family. We actually have one grandchild, a grandson. Um, so. We were asked to make this video uh, about our marriage, the obstacles and the things that, the lessons that we've learned from it, the things the Lord has taught us from it. And so we just wanted to sit and have a conversation on the things that he's taught us. And I, and I think um, definitely one of the, the most important things for uh, a marriage or a relationship is being equally yoked. I uh, just kind of wanted to preface this by saying that uh, we started on the same page and we have kind of been on the same page the, the entire way through. Um, so I think that one thing is, is just a really important uh, principle that, that um, you know, should be applied to, to a marriage, um, you know, hopefully from the start, but if not, find some common ground uh, with whoever you're with and, 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 and you know, grow from there. So, um, but anyway, so we met online, right? Christian Mingle, um, some years ago. Uh, little, little, we, we, we only dated for about three months before we got married. Actually, so it was a, it was a it was a short period of, of uh, courting, dating, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it. It was it was really short. Um, I think about three weeks after we met, he told me his intent was to marry me, and no guys had ever said that before. So I didn't really know what to do with that. Um, but he made his intent really clear, like really early on. And I was coming out of a place of, um, I had a previous marriage and I went through a divorce. Um, and so I was coming from a place where that was not going to ever happen again. I was not going to put myself or at the time I had two daughters and I was not going to do that to them again. And so I knew I had to get this right. I knew that I needed the Lord and I knew that things had to change, um, that I had to change, my heart had to change. And so for three months, I was on my face and I would pray, Lord, if I bring somebody into, into my life and you don't want them there, then please just remove them because I, my picker is obviously broken. <laughs> and so um, I essentially fired myself and I'm like, I'm done. I, I surrendered it to the Lord. And I met, um, I, and I watched him remove people. I watched him uh, remove people that I wouldn't have removed otherwise, but he did. He removed them, and I knew I knew that he had had that. And then, shortly after, um, I met John online, and um, I had written out this long thing of all the all the flaws, all the. <laughs> all the things, all the things I struggled with at the time, all my faults, like it was a massive list. Like I went through everything and I was like, if somebody gets past all that, then, then God help them because, <laughs> um, because I just, I, I wanted to be completely transparent and real. Like these are the things that I have to work out and work through. And I put, I laid it all out there. And for some reason he, re he replied to my message. So. <laughs> well, I, th I think um, the common denominator is surrender. Uh, I was at that point too. I, I, I wasn't married prior to our marriage. She was my first wife, and um, but I did the whole dating thing for much too long of a period. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, you know, I'm sure you, uh, lots of you out there can uh, can uh, understand what, where I'm coming from. It just wasn't a wasn't a good thing, and. Um, it was exact. Was at the exact same place with it that that Mar was. Was that I I admitted that my my uh, way of deciding who I'm with and 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 the, all those sorts of things. I was making those decisions. I wasn't involving my heavenly Father. Um, I was kind of in the driver's seat. And what I finally got so fed up with that that I I, I surrendered to him. I said I am done doing things my way. I truly want, whoever's in my life, I want them to be the person that you put there and the person that you want for me. And I said a prayer um, similar to that, as I want what you want, God. And shortly thereafter, I, I met, I met my, my wife. Um, 
So it's it's just I think it's just the one of the best starting points for anybody uh, is is you know truly submitting to God and His will and His purpose for your life. Um, yeah. still, we both still have a lot to learn, but but again, we were uh, thankfully in that same place of surrender, um, at least on. You know the beginnings of it. Maybe there's there's things that we were still holding on to, but but we definitely had had come to the point where we were we were, we, had, we knew yeah. that that trying to do it our our own way was <laughs> was the wrong way. So. Yeah, yeah. No, there, there had to be that surrender, um, but we were definitely equally yoked for where we both were. Yeah. Um, I think oftentimes people think we have to be like arrived to where God wants us to be yeah. and. If you bring someone in your life and you surrender that, and um, to me that prayer was really powerful. Lord, remove somebody, anybody, whether it doesn't even matter if it's male or female. It didn't matter if it was friends. Yeah. I just asked that him to close that door and remove them, um, and I, I did. I watched it to the point that I was almost a little cynical that when I met John, I was like, the Lord could take you out. Yeah, like, she did just, tell me that. Just, a number of times. <laughs> just know, like the Lord could remove you and that's it. So, but that's the mind frame that I was in and that's, um, yeah. I was a little cynical at that point. Yeah, well, but, um, I wasn't scared. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, we were asked to do this video, um, just to kind of tell our story and, and, uh, you know, share with people in this, in a similar place that we are, how, you know, the successes we had in our marriage and how we got to where we are and, and uh, you know, kind of the, the story behind that. So that's what we're trying to do here. And we don't by any means have it all figured out or like we are still yeah. learning, uh, but there are some very definite defining moments in our marriage um, and in our walk with the Lord that really change things here, like dramatically change. And so those are the things that I wanted to touch on um, today, so yeah. So um, yeah, we uh, we met online and and started that process, um, and it was it was um, I like like my wife was saying that uh, I, I made my my uh, statement up front of you know I, I intend to marry you. I hadn't ever said that to anybody else in my life. You know, I did the dating thing and never felt so strongly about that, um, never felt that at all until I met her. Um, and so um, it was, it, it, I, I definitely uh, knew what I wanted, let's just put it that way, but it was, it was, I don't think it was what I wanted, it was, I, like I said, I had surrendered to what God wanted for my life, and I knew He was speaking to me that, that, that this is the one that, that I want for you. So I kind of made that known, well, at least on my level of understanding of it. So, um, so anyway, where do you want to be in? So there's a lot, I think, for a lot of us. Um, we grow up, or whether we have that example or not, sometimes, for me, I had an amazing example as a mom. Um, but there was a lot of things when I grew up through trauma and through various things that had happened in my life that coming out of that or coming through that to adulthood and then having to be a mom or a wife that I really just didn't know how to do that. And so I had to ask the Lord, Lord, show me, you know, um, show me how to be a wife, show me how to be a mom. I literally asked him to show me anything at this point because <laughs> there's a lot that I don't know how to do. And scripture says he's our helper. So I'll ask him, Lord, show me how to do this because, um, I, you know, I, I don't know what I'm doing and he will, he literally will walk you step by step through everything that you need to know. And, um, it's one of the most beautiful parts of that relationship with him because you just, you can commune with him and talk with him and he will literally, he's walked me through every step of this. And these things that I'm about to speak on are, they come from him. This is not my knowledge or this is all him and things that he's shown me how to change my marriage. Yeah. And so, yeah. Scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. So, you know, we don't, um, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't say, you know, find, a, find some, 
<laughs> teacher and 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 seek after that. It's a seek after Him, and you know, um, and He will teach you through His Holy Spirit. So um, I I did I did a certain a similar thing. Like uh, He taught me how to be a husband, be a father, because um, I had I really didn't know how to do that at all. Um, I lost my dad. He died when I was when I was young, when I was six years old, and uh, my mom never remarried. And I didn't really have any, uh, you know, like father figure in my life to learn from. Um, so when it came time to be a husband and, and ultimately a father, uh, you know, he had to show me how to do that. So, so I think that's that's probably, you know, letting him teach me is is the is is where I did I did some things right. <laughs> so anyway. So one of the things that I find um, that was really prevalent in my life growing up and into my early 20s and even 30s um, is not knowing who my identity was in. And my identity was always in the person that I was with or, and I've seen that even, that can even be, doesn't even have to be a relationship, that can be a friendship, that can be any, in any person anywhere. And when he taught me who my identity was and who I am through him, everything changed. It, it took the pressure off of that other person where they could just be who the Lord created them to be. And I didn't need anything from that person. Like I, I don't need anything from him as far as the things that the Lord should be doing for me. And so when I learned my identity was in Christ, it just completely like, it was so freeing. It freed him, but it freed me at the same time because um, I was heavily relied on on the person that I was with before that. And I think I see it often with women and with girls. Um, if we don't know who our identity is, who we are in Christ, then our identity can be literally in anything. And so I think this is really, really important. So, um, and I think that Kind of going back to the Holy Spirit thing, um, that really was the turning point in our yeah. in our marriage. Um, it came late. Okay, so what I mean by that is um, being baptized in the Holy Spirit, um, truly being spirit filled. So um, you know, when you become a Christian, you know it's taught that you're baptized in the water and that you receive the Holy Spirit, um, but you know, I think that they're kind of meshed together commonly, and they are two distinctly different things, and they, they have to be sought out separately. I mean, sometimes one happens right after the other, but a, for example, a Christian can come to know Jesus, be water baptized, and not get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and live out their life for an, a long time. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, that was kind of the our situation for both of us. We both uh, were Christians before we got married, um, lived as Christians for quite a number of years in our marriage uh, with the Holy Spirit in our life, but not with, with him, without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, without him really dwelling inside of us every step of the way. Um, I think there's, you know, there's scriptural backing for this. And so if we read in Matthew 3, um, verse 11, it says, I baptize you with, the wa with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. And that's, of course, John the Baptist, um, you know, explaining that, that concept. Um, and there's other examples, but they aren't the same thing. And it really, really, truly was the, was the when our marriage really turned around and not that we had a you know a horrible relationship before that, but it, it really helped us just immensely in our walk and in our relationship. So and that happened just a couple of years ago. For uh, Marlena, it was a little bit before me, um, but we both have recently come to that within the last couple of years. And not only did it turn our marriage like just just upside down in a good way, but it, <laughs> it turned our lives upside down and changed them uh, immensely. So, um. yeah, it did, and he's right. 
when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, for me anyways, for me it changed everything. I began understanding things. The scripture came alive. Um, and I began, I, I've always kind of heard his voice, but it, I don't know. It just, for me, it just, everything just changed. And I was able to understand things and um, the gifts would come and things started changing. But, and my heart started changing because a lot of this stuff that we walk through with people, whether it's a friendship or, or marriage, it all starts with our heart. It starts with um, the things that we're operating through, the wounds we have, or, um, and there was a lot, there was a lot of stuff from my childhood, from my early 20s that, um, that had to be dealt with. And once I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Lord really started walking me through that healing and um, and things started changing. And so we've gone through, well, we've gone through different like seasons in our marriage where, um, you know, I've dealt with addiction and there was a point where I was physically paralyzed um, through my back and, and pregnant. And so there's been things and seasons that we've walked through, even, even a, a disagreement season, <laughs> even a season where um, there was a lot of offense and um, what's the word disagreeing and not knowing how to deal with that not not knowing how the Lord wants us to deal with that um, and so these are the things that he really walked us through that that completely changes everything but I think too being in that secret place with the Lord for me changed everything because my heart began to change and I started seeking out to be to do the things that Jesus said to do, to start being the way that Jesus said to be, and He really changed my perspective on a lot of things. Yeah. So, um, I think that that touching on what what you said there, um, you know, with disagreement and and, and um, strife in a marriage, a lot of times the the the, 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 the husband and the wife they can find something that they don't like or something that they don't agree with the direction where something is going and they will kind of present that to the other person and it's easy to get offended and, and um, you know I think that the best way to deal with that is again we're supposed to you know, have no other gods before him put him first in all things even in our marriage and if there's something that we're concerned about or we have a problem with instead of throwing that in the face of the person that you know our, our spouse take that to God put him first seek him seek his face and and he will do amazing things if you if you if you do that um, you know if there is if, if what your spouse is doing that is wrong he will change their heart or he'll change your heart. <laughs> but I think that the, the just the important thing is there is that to, to, to seek him first on these things. Um, it's just, I can't even, uh, you know, tell you how, how powerful that is. Yeah, um, so. yeah the offense, the offense yeah. is really big. I think it's really big for, for a lot of marriages, but relationships as well. And so um, something the Lord had taught me about offense was if I get offended, it's my, it's my problem. It's not that person's problem, it's my problem because I'm the one offended. And it's my heart, it's my heart that needs to change. I can't change that other person and I can't, uh, I can't control how they react or respond to things, but I can control how I react or respond to them. And so, um, that was a, a really defining moment for me because that applies to every rela relationship that we have. It's not just in our marriage. It's um, it's when he when he showed me those words that it was my issue. I was kind of offended over that <laughs> because it's uh, and it took me a minute to like really understand what he was talking about. But it's true. If I'm offended then it's my problem and I need to deal with it. And I need to check my heart and say, okay, Lord, show me the lesson in this. Show me what's in my heart that I am getting offended over this for. And he will, he'll bring it right out and we'll deal with it and we'll move on. Um, but during that offense, one of the things that he's, he's told me is just to be still and be quiet. Don't, don't speak out of that offense. Don't, don't give any words to it. Just give it to him and let him, you know, let the emotions wash over us 
and then he'll deal with it. And like John said, he'll either change his heart, my heart, or both of our hearts. Um, because if you speak through that offense, it's just, it just creates so much more chaos and things that have to be dealt with. And a lot of words are spoken that are not needed and that do a lot more harm than good. So yeah. that's what, that's kind yeah. of what, what I was talking about is that if, you know, if you confront the person that you have the conflict with, um, it's just, it, it just does, well, oftentimes it will blow up in your face. Um, and so if you, instead of, you know, trying to deal with that direct with that person, take that to, to God and let him do the work because really he's, he's the one that does the heavy lifting. So if we let him do that, it, good things happen. But I, I think, I think the, the, the center of all that is pride. You, know, you really have yeah. to swallow your pride, set that aside and submit to him. Yeah. And when you do that, um, positive, positive things will take place. You know, it's hard to do, but <laughs> just give it a it try. Is. Just give it a try. It is. It is hard to do um, because our natural reaction in, in the flesh is just to like lash back or yeah. speak out words or, you know, he needs to hear my point, but he doesn't. Yeah. There, there were times though at the beginning, well, my last few years, at the beginning of all this, um, where I would be watching somebody and one of John's gifts is discerning of spirits. And so he would, like the hair will literally stand up on the back of his neck and he'll just get this feeling when something is not right. And he may not always know what spirit is behind it. He just knows it's not, it's not good. And so I'll be watching someone and he'll just be, at first when, we, when I first started watching people and, um, like people, teachers, like, like teachers, teachers, yeah, teachers, yeah. Uh, Christian teachers. Yeah. And he would just look at me and be like, no, this one is not good. And at first I was, I was like, no, I like this person. No, this is, yeah. it's fine. It's fine. And, um, eventually the Lord would show me, but you know, we started walking that out and eventually the Lord would show me it was not fine. And so and he would show me why it was and stuff, but the times where, we come to the other person and we say, Hey, we see this, or we, you know, we want to correct something and they don't want to hear it. And, they don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. and at that point it's okay, Lord, this is yeah, yours. Um, yeah, exactly. This is, if this, is, if this is something that my heart needs to change on, or if this is something that his heart needs to change on, then I give that to you. And you just relinquish control over it because it's not worth that strife in your marriage yeah. to try to control and try to, if somebody's not going to see, they're not going to see. Yeah, and so the Lord needs, the Holy Spirit needs to do it. Yeah. 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 It's just not going to end well. And that's hard. Like that's, that's really hard to just yeah. be quiet. Um, for me, yeah. a lot, a lot of the lessons the Lord has taught us is to be quiet. Yeah. Um, because a lot of words we speak, uh, even like talking about respect and stuff, it's a lot of stuff that we speak you can lose respect really, really, really quickly by the words we speak. Um, those, those words can speak life or they can speak death. And we don't even realize sometimes where we're just speaking things out. And um, even if you start disagreeing, just learning to just walk away, just walk away and come back. And when those emotions wash over and just sitting down and talking about it, because the, one of the quickest ways I've seen to have that respect dwindle is to start speaking those words out of conflict and emotions and out of our flesh instead of just walking away and then coming back to it. So, um, but even in that, I see, I see sarcasm for me. I'm going to go so far to say as sarcasm can even be a part of that because I was very sarcastic and that's how it was a coping mechanism that I, that I learned growing up and it, it kind of hides the emotion. It kind of hides how you're feeling, but you start making jokes and you start using sarcasm to cover up how you're feeling. And so as the Lord starts healing that area in your life, um, you don't need that sarcasm, but I still make, I mean, I still make jokes, but it's, we have to be really careful because sometimes that sarcasm and those jokes we're making are, is really cutting down the other person. And it doesn't matter if that's a friend or a spouse, um, and so the Lord has really had me examine the words that are coming out of my mouth, the jokes I use, the sarcasm. Is it, 
I mean, we can make jokes, but to, for me, I was personally taking it too far. And um, like I said, just cutting down the other person and that's, that, that's not of the Lord. So, you know. So I think um, one thing that's helped me um, is, is understanding marriage and, um, you know, it, it says that um, to love your wife, let Christ loves the church. And I think in that in that scripture, that really just it, it's it's what marriage is about. You know, the the marriage between a man and a woman is is a symbol of Christ, the bridegroom, and his church, the bride. And um, you know, if you if you apply that example to it, it just really puts things in perspective. And, and um, you know, I just can't say enough about how how that is just so significant. Uh, in marriage um, and again it, it has a lot to do with like we we're talking about putting, putting aside your pride and and um, you know just putting God first and, and you know letting him lead and you be, being being you know, submissive, submissive submissive to that and really submitting to his will and it's you know again that's the, the church submitting to the authority of Christ um, and you know, and that can go both ways. Um, you know, man submitting to 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 his wife on some things, and and, and and vice versa. But again, it has to do with setting your pride aside, and and you know, just not just just setting that aside. <laughs> so. so I think. Um... Part of that setting that pride aside is one of the things the Lord had told me pretty early on. Um, it was a really difficult season we were walking through and it wasn't just in our marriage, there was other things going on in family. And during that time, the Lord had told me, you don't always need to react. Or you know, he said, don't ever react and you don't always need to respond. Jesus never reacted and he didn't always respond. And like, almost everything he's taught me really is just to be still and be quiet and not, um, I would be very quick to say something instead of thinking on it, Lord, like, and just it, having that time to be still and not um, speak out of those emotions. And so when he first told me that, I was like, so you're telling me to be quiet. <laughs> that was exactly what he was telling me. Um, and just learning to listen more, listening more than I was speaking and really trying to hear that other person versus um, me just getting out everything that I, need, I felt I needed to say. And so sometimes things didn't need a response. Um, and sometimes I was learning that I was reacting through things. I was reacting when something would happen and I was reacting versus taking the time and just, you know, stepping back and, and praying on it or just being still and then responding to that instead of like really not reacting through emotion. That was big for me because that's something that I had always done. And so that, that took a long time for me to learn. I still, sometimes I have to like check myself and, um, okay, you know, and I have to like walk myself through it. No, you need to step back and um, because in the flesh, naturally, we just want to like dive in and start, you know, and start yeah. dealing with things out of the that, flesh. That really is and, it right there. Yeah. So. Yeah, living in the flesh instead yeah. of the spirit. Yes. And again, it goes back to the whole being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And really, when, when that happens, His Spirit dwells within you and is there, is with you every step of the way. And you can feel Him. And, um, you know, if you're if you're starting from a place of, of the spirit and what the spirit is telling you, and not what your flesh is telling you, which deceives you, <laughs> yeah. um, it, it just it's just everything is going to work a, a whole lot better. And again, like you said, not not responding out of how the flesh wants you to respond, but sometimes you just gotta be silent, like she said, and listen, and and then um, you know take that to the Lord. Let him help you sort it out and just be submit to him.
and his will. And that's you. hard. Like that, yeah. at first, that was really hard for me. Yeah. There would be times where something would happen, and I and the Lord would say, you know, He would remind me of this, what I needed, how I needed to handle it, and I would just be like, oh, okay, let's go do this, <laughs> because it's not just that, but it's also for being quick to forgive, and so. It doesn't matter the offense or what somebody does to us. It doesn't matter how big or small. If we're not forgiving that person, then we're the one in trouble. Yeah. I mean, scripture says if we don't forgive, we're not forgiven. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter if it's a small offense, a big offense. Um, you know, I come from a place of, of being raped and beaten. And I, I talk about all these things all the time. It's and just um, mind control and just these things that we're not meant for that they were not meant for us to be able to handle and um, it really it really changes how you respond and you react to things but it doesn't matter whether it's something like that or if it's something in a marriage where it's just you know a, words being exchanged we still have to forgive that person like it, it doesn't matter the size of the offense um, the outcome and the consequences are still the same and so and that can be really destructive because if, we, if we're not quick to forgive, now we've got resentment, that starts building, it's like a yeah, snowball. And then it, it's very destructive. Um, and then just it just opens a door to a host of things yeah. that, that we don't want in our marriage. So just keeping that door closed and just being quick to forgive um, one another, but also anybody around us too. That goes for any relationship. Yeah, it's, it's, it can be applied to not just marriage, but yeah. any, any relationship. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, if you if you take offense and you kind of stew on that, it's just such, it's just very destructive. And, it and, is. Uh, but if you if you forgive the other person and and you know just set that aside, um, things positive things happen and from, 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 from starting from that point so um, I could recommend that more yeah. I think that goes kind of hand in hand with um, for me like at operating through these wounds and operating before I had healing for these things there was very much my behavior and my words came through those things and which makes it very focused on me. The focus was on myself and how I was, if how I was feeling and my emotions and how um, it was it was focused on self basically. And so the Lord really walked me through how can I serve my husband? How um, instead of focusing on me and how I'm feeling in the moment, how can I serve him? There'll be times where, like. The, the phone chargers in this house kind of rotate. And, I mean, not times, it's like every day. The, the phone chargers in this house or the device chargers will like rotate. The kids use them, I'll take them. We're like downstairs, upstairs. And you'll get to bed and, and he will almost always make sure my phone charger is by my bed. And there's little things like that, that it's just ways that we can serve each other. Um, you know, he'll, he'll send a text sometimes and uh, and just say I love you thank you for working so hard and even if I don't feel like I'm working hard or um, there's just ways that we can serve each other like getting up in the morning and uh, and making him breakfast before he goes to work ironing his work shirts um, finding ways to be able to serve and be, be a helper and being able to help him um, because I used to look at it as like drudgery like I gotta go make breakfast. I gotta get up early. But again, the focus was on self. It was not focused on the other person and on, on my marriage, and um, which very much Jesus was all about. Focus, you know, loving your brothers and sisters and honoring and serving them, and even in your marriage. And so, well, there's a greater purpose in yeah. that. You know, yeah. um, you have a strong marriage. You know, you're you're putting, you know, your your, your spouse. First, or not, and, and you're doing that and serving the other person. This goes both ways. Um, builds a strong marriage. Your children see that, and, yeah, and they are influenced by it. Um, and then that affects, you know, 
interactions that they have with other people and their future relationships and it just it's so much larger than you know two people and, yeah, and their their true. interactions but it, it's it, it has far-reaching impl implication implications that that you know and again you know husbands love their wives like like Christ loves the church um, again it's a it's a service thing and and it's it's so much larger than than just you know those two people it really, really is so. it is and it can be applied to every relationship how can we serve them how can we what can we do you know to help them with anything they're walking through or um, everybody's so busy living crazy lives and and just I don't know I, I think there's not enough value placed on those just reaching out and lifting someone up and it's the same way in a marriage it's the same thing um, I have learned to to find the things that that I appreciate or um, instead of finding the things that annoy us because if we focus on those things that's what's going to be elevated if yeah. we focus on ugh, the, the annoyance of this or that is it really in the grand sc scheme of things yeah. is it really that big of a deal yeah, it's, it's probably so. not and um, it's a focus it's on, a focus on ourselves yeah exactly and yeah how we feel yeah. in that situation yeah and there's so much more to consider other than yeah. you know our own comfort or discomfort or what whatever the case may be because yeah. you're annoyed in the situation well you know there's 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 more you know put you put <laughs> set yourself aside you know kind of zoom out and look at things from a from a larger picture and you'll see oh you know there's a greater significance there <laughs> so there is and it, it's such an honor to be able to get up and make the food and i'm able to stay home with the kids like that is a massive blessing to me it was a high priority um, for both of us and there's so many blessings like that that the lord has honored and instead of me being focused on me having to get up early to do this like it's it's an honor to go do that it's an honor to take his bags and walk him out that door and give him a hug and say goodbye have a great day you know when he's going to work it's an honor to be able to iron those work shirts even though ironing is not my favorite thing but it's not about me and it's not about what i like to do or it's about how can i serve him how can i honor him and how can i um, contribute you know it's a team effort how can we contribute yeah. and work together yeah. and so and i find that with all the relationships around us like it's the same thing it's how can we honor and serve them and and lift them up and edify them and so um, what else we got I think those were the main things um, I think those were the main things that really just were like life-changing it's just taking that focus off of myself yeah. and my emotions yeah, really, that was, that <laughs> and was, what I want and yeah. I think part of part of surrendering is really surrendering what i want in my flesh and, and what i want in my marriage and what i want out of things and when i surrender to the lord um a couple of years ago i was going through an addiction and i had been spirit filled in my laundry room at a baptism of the holy spirit in my laundry room through a facebook live and um, I started worshiping upstairs in the office with the door locked because I didn't want anybody to see me because that was that was weird <laughs> <laughs> and so I started worshiping in my office up there and then one night I still had this addiction and the Lord was leading me in the direction of where we were headed now and that surrender was the surrender that changed everything it was I had never cried so hard and I had never prayed from a place of complete and utter surrender like i was done either like i was completely done with everything in the physical and the natural and the next day he took that addiction the next day he took um he took the withdrawal he took it all within 24 hours and i remember um i remember looking at google that day i was like what are the symptoms of withdrawal and i was like oh lord i think it was like 12 hours later i said lord Google says I should be dying, like what is going on? <laughs> but I knew, I, I knew in my heart, I knew what he had done. And the next day um, I heard the words, don't go back. And so I knew at that point he had taken it. The biggest moves of God in our lives has been 
when we completely surrender. Yeah, that's like, exactly, that's, it's, yeah no, that's exactly right. And, uh, and it, the, when you surrender, you are relinquishing control and you're giving God room to work in your life yeah. and to really, you know, heal you and, and, you know, so much of us, we try to do it on our own, take it on our own shoulders yeah. and it's just a train wreck. <laughs> it really is. Um, and the moment you truly surrender, you put your pride aside and surrender, then, you know, God can do amazing changes in, within you and in your relationships and, and, and just all the different areas of your life. But it is truly just simply that is, mm -hmm. is surrendering. Once you do that, um, I, I just promise you that that amazing things will happen in your life or in your relationship. I can tef definitely tell you that every significant point in my life was triggered or facilitated by surrender. Yeah. You know, I think it's a gradual thing. I think that, you know, most people, at least from my own example, that I, you know, when, when I got to a point moment of surrender, there was probably still things that I was holding on to, um, but God was taking me one step at a time through it, and every time I surrendered more, it gave him more room to work in my life, yeah. and it just, you know, it just kept, it's kept going, and I know that I'm sure there's, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not at all trying to say I've arrived, um, but I just know I can, I can definitely identify that, that, that everything that matters in my life, that's a good thing was given to me uh, from God for as a, as a reward for surrendering to him. So that is, yeah. that is the, the key it's, to it all. It is the key. It's the degree of surrender. What, what did he tell me? He said the degree of surrender is the degree that he would be able to move in our life. Yeah. And, so, and that's really honestly what we've seen with, that's the foundation at everything we talked about today. That's at the foundation of it all because it's just giving up that control. Yeah, I'm letting the Lord do what He's going to do, and um, it literally changes everything. Yeah, yeah for sure. So. Well, we want to thank everybody for uh, listening to this, and uh, we hope that you got something out of it. And uh, before we let you go, we wanted to just pray uh, for, for those of you out there watching. So uh, we're going to do that now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you are, all that you, all that you provide. Father, we submit to you and your will. We just lift up your name. We give you glory and praise. You are the name above all names. You are the I am. Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Father, we just submit to you and we just, we just seek your face, Father. And we just, we just pray for everybody out there, all the marriages, we just, we just plead your blood over them and we, we ask for your protection over those marriages. We know that, the, that a healthy marriage is the, is, the, is the key to a lot of the problems that we have in, in this world. And Father, we just pray for strength and life to be breathed into these marriages and that, that it starts from surrender to you. Father, we surrender to you and your will and we just thank you. We just pray strength and life just place a holy hedge of fire around people in marriages out there and just strengthen them father and we just make them just impervious to the enemy no weapon formed against them shall prosper father we just thank you we praise you father lord i thank you for every person watching lord i thank you for the marriages that the the covenants that you have brought together lord i thank you um, I thank you for this opportunity to speak life into these marriages. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I just want to put a hedge of fire of protection, the same yes. fire that, that the Lord put around Job. I just yes. want to pray that again around every person watching and their marriages, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I command the enemy to get off of their marriage, to, to be bound in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you would speak life into them, that the ones that are suffering, the ones that are walking and feel like their marriages are falling apart, Lord, I pray that you would just wrap your arms around them and that you would show them your love, that you would show them how you see them. They would be able to see how you see them. Lord, I pray, I pray for these marriages, Lord, that these marriages are the foundation to the family. They're the foundation to everything in the body of Christ. 
Lord, and I pray that they would have complete surrender, that they would get on their knees and they would have complete surrender before you. Father, we just lift them up to you. Father, we plead your blood over these marriages. Father, we just pray that they start with surrendering to you and seeking your face. Father, we just bind the spirit of pride now in the name of Jesus. We just, we just bind it up now so it has no influence on these marriages, Father. And, and just, just, we just pray that your spirit dwells within them, Father, and we just seek you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I come against every power, principality, and power of darkness that is coming against these marriages of every person watching. In the name of Jesus, you have no power against them. In the name of Jesus, I command you, Satan, to get your hands off of them, off of their marriage right now, and off of their family, and off of their children. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that you would give them discernment, discerning of spirits, eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord, to be able to see what's coming against their marriage and to be able to see what it is for, for what it really is. Lord, and what they're fighting, that it's not, they're not fighting their spouses, they're fighting in the spirit, yes. Lord. Yes. I pray for revelation and knowledge of every person watching, Lord. I pray that they would have a greater understanding and knowledge of who you are and your love for them. And if they are unequally yoked, Lord, I pray for the perseverance of their hearts, Lord. I pray for, for the endurance and the long suffering to continue on. Lord, I pray that you would protect their minds and, and their hearts from walking through this journey. Lord, I pray over their spouses. I pray that their spouses, that you would reach their spouses. Lord, that they would begin to have a heart for you, that they would begin yes. to hear you. Lord, that they would begin to become sensitive to your spirit and they would hear you. Yes. Father, we just pray that, that, that it starts with submission. Father, submission to you. Yeah submission to your will and setting aside their own their own wants and desires and and the, and the desires of the flesh we just pray that the flesh is crucified and that they and that they seek your face and they they invite in your holy spirit father just just strengthen them and give them just just bless these marriages and, and just father we just pray that you are there you are present just thank you. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.